Oh, this is a good one. Hey, Chicken. I didn't know he did that. Ooh, I forgot he did that. So today I'm talking to Ashley Lee Lloyd. He was one of the original Michaels in Billy Elliot and has since gone on to work all over the world and was most recently in Dreamgirls in the West End. Hello! Hello! Hi! How are you doing? Be stagey enough. Well, this is what I thought. I thought if I was going to speak to you, I needed to make it uh, as make stage as possible. <laughs> I actually just spoke to my mum because I'm visiting at uh, home and I was like, uh, I'm just doing an interview with my friend. Can you please just make it as stagey as possible in the background? And because I'll show you be before we start. Um, I'm actually at the, my parents' hotel at the minute, so... I was going to say you look like you were in a bar. Ah! Yeah, so we were going to have the, the bar behind us, but I don't think it's very suitable. So. No, that's amazing. So where's there this? Is this in Blackpool? Yes, it is in Blackpool. Um, it's literally... Have you been to Blackpool before? Of course, yeah. <laughs> so uh, where my parents are situated are just next to the central pier. Um, so do you know the one with the big wheel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so literally, if you turn right outside the hotel, walk down probably two minutes, you're on the beach. So it's pretty cool. It's a good place to be in lockdown, let's put it that way. And that's obviously where you were brought up. So you were born there? Well, yeah, I was born, I was born in Blackpool. And then I didn't move out of Blackpool until I got scouted for Whistle Down the Wind when I was eight. So yeah, so, and then I came back for my GCSEs, which was crazy, because obviously being in the West End from all that time or being on tour, and then we went to LA to do the movie and then coming back to do my GCSEs, I was a bit like, oh, hello, <laughs> remember me? <laughs> I think you did Whistle Down the Wind for three years on tour. I, I think I did it for three maybe four. We yeah. had a small break. So when we started, it was, I think it was like year 2000 or 2001. I'm not sure, but I was definitely nine. Um, and uh, we went around the UK. And then the second year, um, I was the only one for three years, so I was like the last child to do eight shows a week. So obviously like the Billies and the Matildas, you've got four casts, uh, where it was just me and uh, Carly, who Carly Toms, who uh, recently played Miss Honey. We played brother and sister. And um, yeah, so if, if we were sick, then we had a 22, 23 year old that would cover us playing a 10 year old. So like, I mean, that's madness now to think about, but it did work. I mean, I, I think we only took a week off when I had tonsillitis as a kid, and I was like, I don't want to go off, but I couldn't sing. So, so yeah, so that, yeah, we did it for four years. But then were you quite a mature kid, or did that really just kind of make you grow up? I think I was probably more mature as a child than I am as an adult, that's for sure. Like, I think I was just so passionate about theatre, and like, uh, when I was super young, uh, the theatre school around the corner, which is, was owned by Tracy Bell, um, it's it's still going now, but she opened an agency, um, and I, that's the same agent that I'm with now. So I've actually had the same agent for 20 years. So I think my mum and dad just kind of was like, right, we need to get this kid out of the hotel because we've got evening meal and breakfast and all these kind of like normal hotel things to do. And I was just whizzing around. So um, so yeah, I think I think I just loved it, and I mean I've always loved it, but I think as a child, like um, it was just fun. Um, so, you know, working with those people at such a young age for me was, you know, it was just so exciting and going to a different place every two weeks was just nuts. Uh, so, yeah. Did, you, did your parents come or were you chaperoned or how did it work? So my mum was quite good, but obviously the hotel was quite busy. So, um, so I had a chap I had about five chaperones actually over the four, the four yeah. years. <laughs> uh, shout out to Fran actually, who was uh, one of my favorite ones. Um, she was very characterful and colorful. Um, and uh, my mum would come on the weekend to travel. Like, so, so if we were moving from say Plymouth to Glasgow, they would, uh, they would say, we can give you the train or we can give you the petrol money. So my mum used to be like, we'll take the petrol money because it means that she can come watch the show and travel me up to the next venue. Um, so I kind of like, my, mine and my mum's relationship was um, all in the car <laughs> or in the theatre. It was never, you know, it wasn't a normal, so to say, but um, it, it was very special. I remember as well, because we used to drive through the night sometimes 
Um, and like, I know this sounds like really cliche, but like the stars would be out and on the motorway, nobody would be driving at that time of night. So like, I've got loads of memories of me and my mum singing in the car or having like heart to heart chats uh, with the stars in the sky. So yeah, so, so although I've not got like, typical memories from school I've got in nights and press nights and traveling at midnight in the car with my mum to the next venue so yeah so that's that's kind of cool <laughs> when did I've not seen you for ages so it's so great to see you <laughs> and then when Sorry, did Billy Elliot happen was that like straight after that or did you say you did your GCSEs and then come back no it, it happened after because um so I I was coming to the end of Whistle Down the Wind and I'd auditioned for Billy Elliot in there um, in their in their like first ever open call where Stephen Daldry and Julian Weber would wait for us to come in and the first line that they said is um, okay so guys this is the first thing you're going to do and you have to run to the table and go I'm Ashley Luke Lloyd and I don't want to be in fucking Billy Elliot anyway and like that was the first round so for me at 12 years old like I was I was quite proper um, <laughs> and that was just like uh, like wow that's what we're going to do for the first round um, and then they knew I was doing Whistle. So the casting director, Jessica Ronane, who was just like amazing, like shout out to her as well. Like she's just incredible. The whole Billy team was just amazing. Um, um, yeah, so they knew I was in Whistle. So I had to go to like a Billy Michael school on the weekends of doing Whistle as well. Um, and then after the Michael school or Billy school, we got the job. Um, yeah, and then I guess I probably had, I can't really remember to be honest, but I think I might have had a couple of weeks off and then straight to Three Mill Studios for this opening of, you know, one of the biggest British movies on stage. So it was very exciting times, really exciting. You played Michael, who was... I played Michael, yeah. So because I dance a lot now in my, like, I always dance, but I think because... Uh, play, you know, being dance captain in Flashdance and, you know, doing Dreamgirls. Like, I think everybody always associates me as Billy Elliot. Yeah. Um, but sorry to all the Billys and James and George and Liam, but for me, like, Michael was the best role to play. Just well, he had funny lines, didn't he? He was the original oh, boy the best. In Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, my, you know, one of the biggest scenes was expressing yourself where, you know, we got moved on to the set and I've got to hold on with all my might to this, uh, to this wardrobe where I was hiding in and I was in this Versace dress that they had made for me <laughs> at 14 years old. Um, and it was done. Um, and I remember, you know, that was the, the beginning. And then all of a sudden, you know, the tap routine happened with all these dancing dresses. So like, you can imagine that having your own song and a scene on a West End stage at 13 years old is like crazy anyway, but then you're dancing with these amazing, like huge dresses that are like people inside them. So like as an adult, we've all got imagination, but when you're a child, like it just, the imagination just comes so naturally that I actually did believe that I was dancing with all these life-size dresses, you know, every night. So, so yeah, I mean, that, that just was a crazy whirlwind. And obviously um, the show did so well and the boys got the Olivier, which we were all, so I remember I was sat because we lived in, East London and uh, all the uh, Debbies and Michaels uh, were sat together um, watching the Olivier's and when they won it was amazing um, and then when we opened on press night Elton John flew us all to his uh, beach in France so like when uh, I <laughs> so, like and they were amazing with us kids as well because we were young kids. So again, were you aware of this? Can you, did you have any comprehension of what like that was like going to Elton John's in France, so we were just like... Yeah, I mean, do you know what? I think we were, we were all Northerners, so there was only one cast member that was uh, from Essex, George. Um, so, like, to be, you know, to be living in London was, like, a huge deal, and it was crazy anyway. So I think that we just kind of got into this whirlwind, and then the show was... We were so in love with the show, and the Valley Girls, and the cast, and everybody from the original cast, it became a family, as you know, like you do become like a little bubble, but this was just an exciting bubble. But so many Northerners were there, but this sounds crazy and sorry to all the Southerners, but like when you've got so many Northern people around you, it doesn't matter whether you're being flown to France or, you know, these amazing parties, it's still quite grounded and a nice environment to be in. So like, yeah, we were all just like Northerners living our best lives and doing the best show. So yeah, it's fab. And just having Elton John and Stephen Daldry just like swanning around was, uh, you know, 
and not just swallowing around, but like, you know, working with them and having them around. It's just, you, you could feel their sunshine aura um, and you kind of just wanted to take in every breath. So I think it was more of a definite, grateful, really trying to get the best out of, of what we were doing. And the lady who plays uh, Debbie in the original cast is uh, my best friend now. And I was her bridesman for her wedding. So oh. that's a relationship that's, when did it open? 2005. So we rehearsed, rehearsed 2004. I don't even know. I'm terrible at math. So however long that is, we've been best friends for, yeah, for life. So that's, that's also another special thing from the show. So yeah. I first met you when you were back in the West End doing Loserville. And the garage, yeah. that was like 2012. Because did you do it at West Yorkshire Playhouse first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played um, a character called Alvin, who was in the ensemble. And we did a uh, summer season at the West Yorkshire Playhouse. Um, and then we all hoped and hoped and hoped. And then we got a small, uh, which was going to be a longer one, but we did close early. But yeah, we got... Um, yeah, we got transferred. So that was my like adult West End debut, which was equally as special. But again, that was a little. Go on. Sorry. got nominated for Olivia as well. Yeah. It's... If you're on touch, babe. <laughs> no. Now, what I loved about that show, though, is like it was like going to high school every day because the eldest person in that show was probably. I mean, I'm 29 now. I shouldn't really say that, but I'm 29 now. And uh, the eldest person, I think, was like. 26 27 so it was like high school so like just the vibe of backstage and you know we were all adults so we were able to go to the pub afterwards and celebrate and and that just the piece for me was like a musical version of the big bang theory yeah, uh, yeah. and that's what i loved and the choreography nick winston's choreography like i i know that lots of people know his stuff but like it it never got easier but the, it was so rewarding as well um and I actually understudied a character called Francis, who uh, was played by Little Chris, who yeah. is sadly not with us anymore. And, um, you know, we absolutely adored him and we were such a close uh, a family connection. And, uh, you know, we think about him all the time and we did the charity um, event for him, which I hope we can do more of because it was, you know, once COVID is over, it was so special. And he was such a special rocket of energy um, and uh, I covered him and one one time uh, I asked Nick if I could play with Francis and then dress up with a hat on so nobody would notice me and be in the ensemble as well and they actually said yes because it was coming towards the end of the contract so I actually played Francis who was this geeky crazy like a little bit out of this world character and then ran around backstage quickly get my costume on for my ensemble track and then get back on and do the ensemble track so that was fun yeah sorry yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, a little twist there and i mean that's the thing about being on i've spoken about many people about being under studies and how your moment is at the expense of somebody else who's like going through something or for whatever reason they have to go off or going on holiday sometimes yeah. they have to break which which is always I think that's the best one as an understudy because yeah. you, when you know that you can have that time to really prepare and and get it to the point that you you would like the audience to see it and feel it but yeah I mean there's always it's always hard to be a cover but you know as a cover I think you have to be so talented because not only are you filling in somebody's shoes that might be a celebrity or a soap star or someone like that, it's also that you've got to bring something else to the table in the show that's not exactly the same as the other character. So I think shout out to all the understudies out there. It's, it's a huge job. And the swings. The swings are like, I've never been a swing. I've been, I did a dance captain for flash dance and I had to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and do all the, the paperwork to make sure everybody's track was, you know, everybody knew exactly what they were doing. And we had on stage swings, but I just like, maybe one day I'll be a swing, but that job is just like, I think it's on par with being a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to, to Dream Girls, which obviously it was your third West End show that was nominated for an Olivier. Oh my gosh, like where do you start with Dream Girls? You, so you and Callum Maylott were the Cadillac Mayans. Cad yeah, yeah, we were. So I, I played uh, the Cadillac role and when I was on holiday or when I uh, injured my leg, which was yeah. sad times, Callum uh, 
covered it, but then also we both uh, was part of the ensemble. Yeah. So after we so we were a surprise, and then after our surprise of Cadillac, which I just recently recently found out that it was it's on Instagram um, yeah. as a music, and I just I was looking because uh, we had some. Um, we had some film crew over from Budapest on a project that I'm working on. And they were like, oh, where can we hear the Cadillac? And so I just went on Instagram and just like, I wonder if it's on there. And it was, and I was like, yes! Um, yeah, so me and Callum, uh, we then was in the ensemble after the surprise, uh, working with Amber Eiley and Lucy Lafontaine yeah. and all those amazing, like, like one in a lifetime artists. Were you a big Glee fan? Because I've literally just started re-watching it all on Netflix while I've been in lockdown. I mean, yeah, of course. Like Glee was like, you know, every stagey or somebody that's in musical theatre, it's it's a dream show, isn't it? All of a sudden you're watching a TV series and then you're watching a musical and it's Ryan Murphy, like I am obsessed with Hollywood and the politician and all the things that uh, American Horror Story, like I love his stuff. So meeting Amber for sure, this is actually like, I think I told Amber this, but when it announced that Amber Riley was playing F.E.Y., I actually went on her fan page on Facebook and I just said, you are the perfect choice for this and I can't wait to see you. And then obviously the auditions happened. Um, and like my, my, my family are religious. Um, my, my family go uh, to church like Christmas times, not like overly. Um, and my brother's in the army and all that lot. But I came out of my audition for Dreamgirls and I was like, I really need this. Like, this is, this is what I want. Like, as a performer, like, if there's one thing that, you, if you could only perform in one show, it was like, this is the show that I want to do. Um, so I actually went to church um, straight after the audition and I just kind of just took in everything that happened. This was after the final. And I actually prayed and, and I know some people will be like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. But I think just taking a moment to just really zone in everything. And when, when I got the call, I just like, I was in Starbucks. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, that just that first year, like the whole time was amazing. But just like, just being a part of that original cast is just something that I'll never forget, ever. But then going back to understudies, so did, I heard a rumour that when you and Callum were both off, they had to get somebody from one of the ushers in. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so um, I'm sure. Right gonna... now, I mean, it's, it's Minister God. No, we did have, we had one show where um, me and Callum were off, and um, David from uh, Book of Mormon came and did it for, for it. two shows, and he's incredibly talented, so like amazing but yeah there was one time where one of the front of house guys was the cover I, I don't know whether it was the whole time um but yeah i mean why not there's really? so much talent front of house like yeah. like it's you know that you know front of house is our actors and performers waiting for that job or in between jobs so like it made sense and and for sure like yeah but we me and Callum were very good we 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 did concentrate on trying not to go off as much as possible. So it was only one day out of two and a half years, which I think is pretty good going. Yeah, really yeah. Good. Especially like just with the choreography being Casey Nicola and, uh, you know, John, like that choreography is just like the best choreography I've ever done in my entire life. And also the scariest, you know, the moment before Bad Side, you know that that four or five minute dance break is just going to be just so much and so like it's like a fire um but obviously once it's finished and the audience roar like you were like yes that was worth it <laughs> i think you choreographed closer to heaven and above the stag didn't you yes yeah yeah, yeah. i did that uh did I I did that that the other side yeah i mean i i'm just like i just love creating i love being in a show being on the other side i love directing i love researching choreographing and for me like working with stephen dexter again because stephen dexter was actually the director of loserville and who is a very good friend of mine um and we just have the craziest conversations and in depth about characters and about journeys and stories and all those creative things so working with him and the theater itself is incredible like i know you've been like the, the work that goes behind the scenes to make those shows happen is just incredible. Um, and yeah, and then the cast, we had like the most amazing cast, like 
we did this audition and then they all said yes we'll do it so working working on that show was just a dream like pet shop boys music they came and and uh you know, Jonathan Harvey came and yeah, just being able to, cause it's quite commercial and I love that kind of like passionate, it's quite fiery and dare I say a little bit sexual. So it's got that kind of like, a bit. yeah, so it was very much about romance and, and connections and things. So like the choreography was so much fun to explore. So I had a, a ball with that one. I'm working with Stephen. I've worked with Stephen like tomorrow. Like where, whether it be on the Palladium or in a church hall, like I'd be like, yes, let's go. It's great. <laughs> but yeah, but pick it up on so you, you're writing and directing. So you you started. I was mad on her the first thing you wrote, or was it burlesque? Oh no, mad on her was definitely the first thing. So I I, I got the rights to some music as a jukebox, and I wrote the book um, around it, and it. Originally, I wanted it to be quite immersive, but with the UK tour that we did, we went to like fringe venues and it, it didn't quite work. So the second time we did it was in London when I was doing Dream Girls. We did it on the weekend yeah. so I could fit it in. So that was my first, my first uh, kind of writing venture. And I did that with my friend Corianne, yeah. who helped me. So that was incredible. And like you said, it was a jukebox musical based on the songs. Of, well, it was 80 songs, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, all 80s songs. So we had All Night Long. Uh, we had uh, Conga. Come on, everybody, let's do the Conga. We had uh, Heartbreaker by uh, Dion Warwick. Like, the songs in, in it were just great. And I'm obsessed with the 80s, like anything 80s. So, like, just being immersed in that kind of fashion and the music. And, yeah, and we had a great cast, too, because... I mean, we were so lucky because we were doing a fringe tour and I was taking the cast like to the Lake District and to Newcastle and to all these places and to the Hope Mill, which we, yeah, yeah, we were like one of the first, first kind of um, visiting shows because we just did the weekend and we came and did um, as, as one of their first visiting shows and I could feel the vibe in that place like this is going to be so good for the North. I mean, all their stuff they do is incredible, but yeah. So that was the first first thing that I, I wrote with Corianne, which was, yeah, it, was, it, it seems like an age ago, but um, we've developed it now into something else, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> so was this a movie made in the 80s? Yeah, so we've been... Tell me more about that. It's just so exciting. Um, so we finished doing the musical and uh, James and Rosie Pearson came to Liverpool to watch the uh, in the smallest theatre we did and James said to me he was like I can imagine this more raw and more like uh, gritty down to earth and then I did a movie called Ginger Clown when I was 21 with the most incredible director called Balazs Hapani from Budapest and we just kind of connected like we got this like really crazy like humor going on and I said will you fly over and watch the show and tell me what you think. And he watched it and he was like, it's absolutely bonkers, it's crazy. Um, and that's obviously because I wrote it and I'm bonkers and crazy. And um, so yeah, so anyway, he was like, I can see this working as uh, British, you know, like that kind of gritty, and dare I say, Billy Elliot and Angus Thongs and Inns, that kind of like vibe. So we, yeah, we developed it as a really gritty Northwest, because obviously I'm from Blackpool, um, piece. And we managed to get some investment and work with the actors. And yeah, and it's finished. We've done, it's a 90 minute movie. We went to Cannes in October. Um, and so we're in the very last stages of post-production. So fingers crossed that the next, and we've got Sue Devaney in it as well, who's from Dinner Ladies and Corrie. She, she plays the wedding shop owner. She's so funny. Um, and the cast are all musical theatre, which is, is amazing for me because you know how hard it is for musical theatre actors to get even an audition on telly sometimes. So like, I'm really proud of, of what we've achieved. So fingers crossed, if everything kind of goes the way that I want it to, then hopefully we'll be able to see it on a VOD platform or at a cinema pretty soon. So fingers crossed. Fingers well, crossed. Did you manage to, to merge TV work as well? as well as your theatre work. So you, you've done stuff like Doctors and Waterloo Road, which, I mean, that had a lot of stage people in over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've done film. You, did you do a film with Michelle Pfeiffer? 
when I was 14, after Billy Elliot, yeah, they came, Michelle Pfeiffer and Amy Heckerling, who uh, directed Clueless, which is wow. like another classic. They came to see the show, uh, Billy, and they asked me to audition for a character in it. And um, yeah, I didn't get the first character I auditioned for, but I got the second one, which was The Friend, and I got to fly over to, to, um, to Los Angeles for two weeks and shoot it. So yeah, and that was oh, amazing. Right. I was afraid to stop him. He was doing it to make you laugh. I think. Pretty good, yes. Is Brianna Mings here? Uh, not yet. But she's coming. Uh, probably. Come on! Man. Crazy. I like you said about Ginger, Ginger Clown, so that was with Tim Curry. So I didn't actually work physically with Tim Curry. So he, he was the voice of the clown. Right. So I had to work with an animatronic monster who was trying to kill me, yeah. um, running around this theme park. So yeah, that was also a, a huge highlight of my career is running around a Hungarian theme park, being chased by Tim Curry as an anim animatronic figure. <laughs> so, as you do. <laughs> but do I survive? That is the question. <laughs> Go back and watch it. Is it on Netflix? Uh, it, was, it was on Netflix uh, a while ago. I believe it's on Amazon, I believe. But I don't know. I mean, they change their what they put on so often, and um, it was I was twenty one, so it's eight years ago that that, that came out. So yes, yeah, so it's quite quite a while. <laughs> In an old amusement park where anything can happen. I'm ready. I love this kid. A horror comedy. If you ask me what I am, I can tell you easily. What are you doing here? I came in after you. I'm the worst nightmare you've ever had. Sam, I think there's someone in that boat. I think he's watching me. Get ready for the scariest, bloodiest, and funniest challenge ever. Welcome to my fairy tale. <laughs> My old man told me no one set foot on these grounds since like 1928. It was like Black Friday or something. What do you want from me? It would take a long time to tell. I'd rather show you. <laughs> the clown is hungry for you. Mama said, quack, quack, quacker. Time to die, motherfucker. And let's talk now about so the, the Aeronaut. And you did, so your first show there was burlesque. Yeah, so the Aeronaut is in West London, uh, Piccadilly Line, uh, to Acton Town. And they have like, they're very famous for their brunches and their roasts. Because yeah. they do like Disney brunches and like, they do amazing aerial shows. Because they've got a big time. Their roast chicken is delicious. Yeah, I mean, when we did Bless, they used to treat us so well with like, they bring in like, okay guys, we brought you a roast, or we brought you pasta, and we'd be like, yes, like, just like halfway through rehearsals or, or what have you, but they're, they're super, super supportive of the theatre world, and I think it's really great because they are, they do have singers and they have aerialists, but they don't have musical theatre shows or plays, so it's, it's been quite new for them. Um, and Roxy and Dean, who are incredible there, um, yeah, they, they originally uh, supported me and my friend Valentina on Balest, and we trialed the show, and it did well, so we did it again, um, and then we got a really great review, and uh, one of the, the review reviewers in London really loved the show, so that created a buzz. Yeah, can you um, please lead to the Turbine Theatre? Yeah, we took it to, so after that, we took it on a small fringe tour again, like Mad on Her, um, and after, and we took it to Blackpool option. And then after it had been on the UK tour, we then, um, we got invited to the Turbine, uh, which is obviously Paul Taylor Mills. And yeah. it was amazing that he believed in the show to open the spring season this year, which, which was, which I can't believe it was this year, but yeah, it was, it was January this year. We did, um, we did five shows on, on their first season there. And, and that again was great. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we did with Burlesque, and we just grew it and changed it, and we made it very much like 
uh, a kind of like workshop process. Like we changed things to what might work for the audience and the cast were incredible. The dancers, like the inspiration for the show was obviously the Cher and Christina movie. Um, but also with like a crazy horse in Paris, like a twist on like showgirls. And, and so like the cast were just, just fire. And we had aerialists. Um, yeah, so after, after doing Burlesque there, I went back to uh, Roxy, um, who is the kind of like the events manager, um, boss lady. She's a boss lady. She's awesome at the Aeronaut. And I was like, I've got this great idea for the garden. Um, the government have lifted, lifted the ban on... Uh, theatre being allowed in socially distanced uh, booths or seating and I said I've always wanted to play the Mad Hatter and write Alice in Wonderland and she was like yes let's do it so we've got Kerry Boyne who is uh, a TV presenter on ITV and lots of children's shows um, we've got Billy Hardy who uh, was just about to go on the Bat Out of Hell tour um, she's also incredible. She was in Closer to Heaven. That's how I know. Her. So she, she's amazing. And we've got Brooke Havana Bailey and uh, we have Emily Shook. And uh, directing is Jessica Bastic Vines, who was actually a nominee for uh, Best Supporting Actress in the UK Theatre Awards. Um, so yeah. How was she and Billy Elliot with you or after you? She was in Billy Elliot as a ballet girl um, in the original cast, but she actually did, I think she did a couple of teams because she was a little bit older right. she was 16 so she she did more shows than we did and she's also um a friend that's been my friend for yeah. years and years uh and she uh did um she did an incredible show in in liverpool uh which which got her the the nominee and she's and, and let the right one in as well at the apollo um she did that that show and she's just like another amazing brain and mind and thinks out the box and I'm super excited to work with her on, on Alice in Wonderland which is is the next show that we're taking to the, the outdoor theatre uh, which is their garden um, at the Aeronaut so yeah so okay. grab a teapot and, and they basically outdoor um, adapted their outdoor space for this production no so they have an incredible, like, it's like circus booths. And uh, there's, I think there's about 21 booths. So we, we can actually, we can have quite a few people. Um, and then away from the, the garden theatre area, there's also another um, garden, which is kind of just more relaxed. So that their outside spaces are, are amazing. And they've been there since they opened. So, so we're kind of, we're bringing all our props and we're going to create this tea party. We've got feathers. We've got this crazy blanket that you'll see. Um, lots of colours, lots of glitter. And then, of course, the characters that are, you know, are made famous from the Lewis Carroll book, which you'll see. We changed Tweedledee and Tweedledum to Tweedlefab and Tweedlefabulous. <laughs> so, yeah, and then Mad Hatter and, and Queen of Hearts, Alice, White Rabbit, they're all going to be there. Which and who is it aimed at? So you've got tickets for five pounds for children and then they're ten pounds for adults. Well, I, I've said that it's a little bit like Toy Story, where when you watch Toy Story as a child, you watch it in a completely different way to when you're an adult because you know there's there's little underlining humours there which uh, you know can relate to adults but would mean completely a different thing to kids. There's definitely not going to be anything in there that that the mums and dads will be like, oh no, cover your ears. It's, it is definitely family friendly, um, but there is definitely some underlining humour there which will make the mums and dads giggle. <laughs> and you, so what drives you to write and create stuff like this and get your friends involved? Is it that kind of giving platform to people that... Uh, do you know what? I think it's just like my mum always said to me going back to when I was growing up in the hotel that I'm always on the make. I've always got ants in my pants, I can't stop, I'm ready to do the next thing. Um, and obviously I love my pals and how talented they are. Um, and we do audition as well, like that's one thing that I will state, when we did, you know, when we first did Burlesque and first did Mad On Her, we did an audition process um, to get new people in. But I just love theatre and film and stories and, and pretending like, you know, you, you meet all these people that are lawyers and bank managers and you know, soldiers and, you know, millionaires. But as an actor, you get the gift of being able to play everything. And I think that's, I think 
that's pretty special in itself. Um, and I just can't wait to have this crazy tea party. It's not going to feel like we're on stage. We're just going to be having an absolute ball and anybody can come. And when's it on? So it's going to be on the 19th to the 21st of August. Um, so it's this month. In two weeks, we open. Uh, and it's going to be at two o'clock. The doors will open at two and the show will begin at 2.30 sharp. Don't be late for a very important day. <laughs> um, that sounds exciting. Are you, are you excited about going back to London? Yeah, I mean, I've not been to London now. I was choreographing a, a show that's opened in Ibiza actually recently. Um, at, um, in, yeah, February was it? Yeah, February. So like the week before we went into lockdown. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I've not been to London since, so I can't wait just to be there and feel the vibe and, and, and just, yeah, be in the big old smoke. It's going to be great with my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Right. Well, I'll let you get on because I know you've got loads of meetings coming up. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. It was so great. This didn't even feel like we were having an interview. I, just, I was having a catch up, but I want to ask you loads of questions now, but we'll have to like catch up properly. I'm going to come and stay at your mum's hotel. I'm there. Oh, it's, it is it is a, a, a bit of fun. We call it the home pub. Well, they say this about, like, obviously, with not being able to travel abroad and stuff, they're looking for, pe like, recommending places to stay within the UK. And you've got your mum and dad's. Oh, my gosh, it's great. Yeah, we even do the uh, bed and breakfast in a little takeaway. So before you go to the Tower or the Pleasure Beach or a walk on the beach, you can take your little takeaway breakfast with the <laughs> and is that all open again now the pleasure beach yeah i mean it's all uh, with uh, social distance and everything i think they're doing a third of the capacity that they would normally do um but yeah the tower the tower tops open uh which has got a cocktail bar so why wouldn't you um the pleasure beach um and the sandcastle the water park's open now as well so yeah 